What's going on guys and welcome back to another video and welcome to your economic update for Friday, June 8th. Now we have a new report that came out this morning. I want to address what that is. That is our new jobs report. We now have a updated uh, unemployment rate. We now have an idea of what's going on within our workforce. I want to address what's going on there so that everybody is kind of on the same page. We also are going to address America's major debt crisis. And it's not just the United States government. It's the United States government, it's corporate debt and consumer debt. I want to address where we are at because this is a huge concern. So let's jump into this economic update for Friday, June 8th. If you have any questions whatsoever, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. So let's start off by talking about our June jobs report that came out this morning. And if you're wondering why is this a June jobs report when we are in the month of July, it is because we are always one month back. Okay. So this month, this was supposed to be a big indicator as to what the Federal Reserve has been doing and whether or not it's working or has it been enough. I want to address what's happening. So let's look at what came out this morning. First off, unem er, employment rose by 372,000 jobs in June. The expectation was only 265,000. So we got 107,000 more jobs. That's good, right? Well, let's address that. We also know our unemployment rate stayed the same at 3.6%. This is actually the fourth month in a row that it stayed right there at 3.6%. We also know the amount of unemployed individuals. This remains at 5.9 million people. This is a key number. This is one of those things that the Federal Reserve is looking at. How many unemployed individuals do we have? We have 5.9 million. Okay, but we also have 11.2 million open positions. Here's the reason why this is so important. Many companies, and again, we got 11.2 million open positions. Even though many companies are implementing hiring freezes for the foreseeable future, and we were expecting to see companies tighten. That's not what we're seeing. The reason why this is a huge issue is because Many were expecting the amount of open positions to fall below 11 million. Now, here's why this is, this is huge. What the Federal Reserve wants to see is one-to-one. -one. They want to see that the amount of open positions is the exact same as the amount of currently unemployed individuals. That has to remain at one. Here's a problem. We currently have 5.9 million people that are unemployed but we have 11.2 million open positions. That means for every one person that's unemployed, there's 1.89 open positions. This is not one-to-one. -one. So the Federal Reserve is likely to tighten more because of this one number. Now, here's another major factor, and that is the average hourly earnings. In June, it actually rose by 0.3% which is annualized to 3.6%. Okay, that's doable. That's not bad. But for this year, this past year, we have seen wages go up 5.1%. Even though estimates were saying that we're sitting at 5%. So this does mean that we are not at risk of having a wage price spiral at the moment. But this is something that the Federal Reserve is going to continue to look at. So let's address what is likely to occur because I know a lot of people are going to ask, okay, that's great. You gave us some numbers. You gave us some facts, gave us some information to, to think about. But what does this mean? What is the Federal Reserve going to do? Well, here, and again, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you what the Federal Reserve is likely to do. But again, nobody knows. I don't know what the Federal Reserve is going to do. President Biden doesn't know what the Federal Reserve is going to do. Even the Federal Reserve themselves likely have no clue what they're going to do. But here's what's likely to occur. Again, keyword is likely. With the jobs market still very strong, it's likely that it's, it's going to be a sign that the Federal Reserve could tighten even faster. We could see higher or more rate hikes or even faster rate hikes. But the other thing that must be factored in 
is that we also had revisions back from April and May. Okay, so in April and May, the, the jobs report came in and said we had more jobs than we actually did. The revision came in and it revised down. So in April and May, those two months, we saw 74,000 fewer jobs. But this month, as of right now, we saw 107 additional jobs, which means you factor in those two and three months, okay, with what just happened this month or in June, well, that puts us at 33,000 jobs ahead of exp expectations. Well, here's why this is so big. 33,000 jobs is, is not a huge number. And according to reports just this morning, this could signal that the Fed is very close to that sweet spot, trying to figure out how high can they raise rates, how quickly can they raise rates, and will that slow down uh, our jobs market? And it might. Now, we won't know until after the CPI report that comes out uh, next Wednesday. And then we got the FOMC meeting that comes, uh, that will be, uh, I believe, July 26th and 27th. Okay, so we still got, uh, you know, a couple weeks there. We're about three weeks there. So these are obviously going to be very important. These are things that we need to keep our eye on moving forward. But this isn't a clear indication that we are going to see major changes by the Federal Reserve. That is why we need to keep our eyes on this moving forward. So again, I promise I'll do that and I'll update you as we get more information. But again, this jobs report, this is just the beginning. Here's something else that was recently reported. And it, according to the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, they are saying that the total debt in America is $63.5 trillion. Not million with an M, not billion with a B, trillion with a T. The reason why that is so extravagant, so excessive, and why this is a major problem here in the United States is because we only bring in about $21.4 trillion. Now I say only, but man, I'd love a trillion dollars. You know, let me know down in the comment section below. Who would just love $1 trillion? That's it, just $1 trillion. That'd be great, right? You could do a lot of stuff with a trillion dollars. But here's the reason why this is so so important and a major problem. We bring in $21.4 trillion. That is corporations, that is individuals, that is our government, okay? But debt-wise, we have $63.5 trillion. That's three times, or just about three times the amount of debt to income. That's horrible, that's horrible, okay? And I say this because Right now, the, the, and the way money is produced is by you take out debt. By taking on debt, you, pr you produce money, right? It creates money. That's just the way it works. But the problem is we have three times the amount of debt to income. But what happens when debt becomes too expensive to pay back? What happens when consumers can't pay back their debts? What happens to the, the corporations? Well, what happens to those corporations who aren't getting paid by the consumers and now the corporations cannot pay their debt? What happens there? And then I don't think I need to tell you what would happen if our government cannot pay back their debts. I, now, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys can get a good idea of what's going to happen. It would be a complete disaster. So we don't even want to talk about that. But this is a major problem. This is a major problem, and the reason why this is a problem is because money was so easy to get. When we had very low interest, right, money was easy to get. Everybody was getting loans, whether it was on a car or for a home or for a business or for whatever it may be. Everybody was borrowing money because it made sense to borrow money at like almost 0% or 2 or 3%. When inflation was five and six percent, it just made sense. Why wouldn't you protect your money and your assets by borrowing money, using that money as opposed to spending your cash and losing its value, right? Just makes sense. But again, all these things are starting to kind of unfold at the moment. 
And as we get more information on what's going on, how we are actually being impacted by our federal government, by the current economy, I promise I will fill you in on all the latest news and updates. Again, just want to thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.